Hi, my name is Sydney Gerbel, and I am an economics and political science student in BU's undergraduate college of arts and sciences. This showcase will highlight the course Inequality and American Politics taught by Professor Katherine Einstein. The Metrobridge program enabled my classmates and I to work with the city of Framingham, specifically the office of Mayor Yvonne Spicer, to support them in evaluating potential instances of racial inequity in their city. My group conducted a quantitative analysis of the 2020 apartment moratorium petition, which, when later approved by the city council, banned applications for new multi-unit housing projects for nine months. Using the Framingham MapGeo Home Ownership Database and the official voter registration file, we identified the name, address, age, home ownership status, property value, and political affiliation of each petition signer. We also predicted race using an R package that has been proven to be effective in predicting race for an aggregated population. Finally, we predicted the gender of each petition signer using their first name. For the sake of time, I invite you to pause this video if you are interested in viewing our data. Our primary finding is that supporters of the apartment moratorium petition were more likely to be white, to be older, and to be homeowners with above average property values. This demonstrates that the groups who may be most affected by an apartment moratorium, those who are younger, non-white, and lower or middle income residents, were ultimately underrepresented in the decision-making process. Our main recommendation to Mayor Spicer's team was to present the demographics of petitioners in public meetings to inform policymakers and residents alike of the representation gap that exists between those who sign the petition and the general population. We also believe that greater support for multi-unit housing could be achieved if the city were to openly and directly reinvest revenue from new and existing multi-unit housing into community services such as local infrastructure. We also hope the city will apply our findings to broader opportunities. We recommend educating residents and city council members on the benefits of multi-unit housing in Framingham, especially near metropolitan areas and public transportation, as a means of reducing the city's carbon footprint and reducing the transportation costs of working residents, which is the known barrier to equitable labor market participation. This education and discussion could take place in public meetings held in partnership with departments such as planning, public works, and finance. We hope that our findings will aid Framingham in their efforts to create a more equitable city.